democracy may in fact be just as bad. The Honourable David Parker. Yes, can I just uh, develop that theme a little? Because uh, I, I do agree with the Honourable Leanne Dalzell that uh, it might be wise just to put this one on the back burner a little bit. We're not opposed to the idea of uh, there being oversight of those who are responsible for the supervision of securities, uh, securities trustees and statutory supervisors, but uh, maybe this is something that, if I take the Honourable Leanne Dalzell's suggestion, to be that this might be something that falls within the ambit of the Financial Markets Authority rather than a separate entity? Yeah, yeah, the Financial Markets Authority. The Financial Markets Authority rather than a separate uh, 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 body. Now, these, these, these issues as to cost are very relevant. You know, one of the problems that we have in New Zealand's capital markets is that the cost of raising capital through compliance costs can be too high. Now, there have been some terrible problems and practices in respect of finance companies, and uh, we've had a uh, good discussion about that in uh, the bill that was previously discussed. There was far too much uh, related, uh, um, related party activity. Um, there were, um, uh, there were uh, people that were effectively lending money to things that they had an interest in and they were effectively uh, reaping the financial benefit of very risky transactions if they went well on the back of relatively low uh, interest rate investments by naive investors. And the New Zealand regulatory environment didn't protect those investors uh, by making sure they were properly aware of the risks that they were taking. Uh, and the regulatory settings didn't enable the regulators to burrow into what was happening in a way that would have exposed that earlier and therefore minimised the loss. Now, I'm not one of those people who thinks, and I'm sure there's no one on our side of the House or indeed on the National Party, thinks that we can uh, avoid risk, uh, but we ought to be uh, appropriately highlighting risk, and in those cases we weren't. Now, uh, having uh, said that in respect of finance companies and the lack of information that was provided to investors and the lack of regulatory oversight of poor practice in, within those finance companies uh, and the, uh, the failure to pick up related party investing uh, and particularly, and I find this somewhat galling, that none of our regulators, despite the failures in the legislation, I'm not going to let them off completely off the hook. I think I find it galling that some of the people that have ripped off people this time had prior form from having done it previously. And I would have thought our regulators, uh, and, uh, and I include in there the, um, the auditors and the, the statutory supervisors of some of these, ins these uh, finance instruments, uh, and uh, the uh, regulatory bodies that oversee them, I find it hard to accept that no one had a look at people who had prior form who had done something similar to rip off investors in earlier incarnations. And I would have thought that those people particularly should have had the, the, uh, the heavy hand of the regulator or the, the heavy, the, the, the um, intense scrutiny of the regulator in a way that might have uh, prevented some of the losses. Having said all of that, we do have a problem with the expense of raising capital for new ventures that aren't finance company related ventures. And we need to take care that we don't overly regulate that space because we want to be encouraging innovative enterprises in New Zealand to thrive. And one of the things they need to thrive is access to capital. And that access to capital should be available to them through accessing retail deposits from uh, people who want to invest in their companies. And we ought to make it not too expensive for people to produce prospectuses that are easily understood, that properly describe risk, uh, and uh, the, the, the impediments that we put in, 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 in the way of that by increasing their compliance costs hold back New Zealand business in a way that we don't want on this side of the House. So we... We say that in respect of this, we think uh, that, uh, that we need to just have a bit of a catch-up now and think, well, look, we're, we're actually dealing to the big problem here in respect to finance companies, and that feels like that's relatively under control now, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell, with the legislative fixes that are on the way, the finance company things that have gone wrong in, in prior years are on their way to being fixed to the extent that they can through regulation. I'm, I'm looking to 
uh, the Honourable Anne Dalzell, because her expertise in these matters is greater than mine. But we have to make sure that in terms of the fixes that we've got in respect of that part of the market, we're actually not over-regulating raising of new capital for inherently risky, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, for inherently risking risky um, equity investments in respect of new technology businesses. Uh, these businesses need to raise capital uh, to expand in New Zealand. That's a hard ask for these businesses because they have to expand into export markets while they're quite small because the New Zealand market in respect of some of these niche products is so small. And so New Zealanders uh, f uh, have got these nascent businesses that are being uh, developed to commercialise these uh, uh, exciting ideas which can produce export earnings for our country. Um, and at an early stage in the development of those businesses, they're wanting to sell those products and services offshore. That in turn requires quite a bit of capital. They need that capital to be raised. Um, banks won't lend it to you, you know, unless it's secured over a... Uh, over real property, uh, they're not likely to lend it to you. Uh, therefore, you have to raise it uh, from new shareholders who are willing to invest. Now, if we have rules that are so restrictive that we actually limit the pool of likely investors, we're actually doing a disservice to our economy. I don't accept that the only people that should be able to invest in high-risk companies are people who are already very wealthy because they're you know, able to lose their money uh, and able to better assess risk. I, I don't like a security system that effectively forces everyone to be professional investors rather than enables ordinary people in New Zealand uh, to have a stake in the outcome of our commercial enterprise. So. I want to facilitate that. I don't want to avoid risk for people. I want to simply uh, and relatively cost-effectively describe risk to those people uh, so that they can take that decision. And if they take that decision and it turns out to be Microsoft, well, they'll be wealthy. If it turns out to be uh, Fortex or something like that, uh, or Feltex, they'll lose their money. Uh, and people who invest do uh, sometimes lose their money. What I don't want to do is to prevent people having the opportunity to raise money to expand these businesses that we need to improve New the breadth of New Zealand's exports by inappropriate securities laws. So, uh, you know, New Zealand does have a problem in terms of the breadth of our exports. It's true that the rural sector is going gangbusters at the moment by the highest ever um, commodity prices uh, and a relatively low dollar currently compared with where it was six months ago. Um, but um, that's not enough for New Zealand to bridge the wage gap with Australia uh, and to, uh, to, to afford the sort of uh, social services that we like in our health and education systems in New Zealand. We do need to build the breadth of our exports. In order to build the breadth of our exports, we have to enable those companies to raise money and we must make sure that in properly regulating some of the poor conduct that we've had in finance companies and other financial intermediaries that we don't stop the small companies being able to access capital from people who are not their family, uh, from people who are not um, you know, the, the, the wealthiest individuals in New Zealand but who collectively could all invest you know, $5,000 each if they had it to raise $250,000 for you know, 50 investors at $5,000 to raise $250,000 to get these nascent companies operating, expanding to their next level of, of expansion. The compliance costs at the moment for that thing are already too high, partly because of our ridiculous financial reporting uh, rules uh, um, and the audit uh, rules around those which need to be simplified and I would hope that we just take a wee break before we, um, we, we perhaps um, entrench some overly high costs through this particular bill. Having said that, we agree with the intention. Uh, we're just suggesting that maybe this could sit on the order paper um, once it goes through the committee stage, awaiting an exposure draft of another piece of work that's been done by the Minister, which might be able to tidy these things up at the same time.